Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to issue 28 of the Spinner Rack. This week we're going to be discussing some of our favorite comic book cartoons. There you go. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joined by... Junior Ruiz, co-host of Comics Remix. That's right. Yep. Yep, buddy. 28. 28. Wow. Comic book cartoons. Thank you, people, for letting us uh, come this far. Right. <laughs> Anyways, comic cartoons. You know what? I wouldn't do this shit anyway. <laughs> Not that we have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah, I ain't got nothing better to do. It's Friday. No, comic book cartoons, man. There's such a wealth, as I was saying before we started this, of just things to explore here. Um, from everywhere. I mean, you could go all the way back to like the the flesh or Superman. I love that stuff. Yeah, I forgot about that. That stuff was great. Yeah, you got that. The, the but then, in, in my opinion, not including the Flesher cart, uh, Superman, or the old '60s Marvel stuff, where it was pretty much just the artwork that was right. cut out and the models were moving. Totally. out of South Park. Oh yeah. Um, to me, I think the modern era of what we now know as a comic cartoon started in the 80s and it started with Challenge of the Superfronts damn I forgot about that yes and that was 70s No, and then the Spider-Man cartoon in the 60s okay never mind I retract what I said never mind because you got the 67 Spider-Man cartoon and you've got the Super Friends cartoons um man there's just so much there's so much you know I think it just like exploded so to speak in the 80s is probably what I meant to say because they were big but they weren't I think the true Comic book based cartoons exploded in the nineties. Yeah, I you see got that. Batman and Spider Man and then Superman and the X Men and then yeah, that's that true. It's nuts from there. I'm not. We'll see because I was counting Turtles, but then I remember that Turtles kind of got uh, too cartoonish, and a lot of people were like, "That's a comic book." Yeah, you know. So in that sense, you could say it started in the eighties because based off the comic. But then again, like I said. You can't... It wasn't... The cartoon and the comic, definitely two different things. Yeah. But if we're sticking to straight cartoon... Or, excuse me, Kind of like the, the Walking Dead, I think there's a lot of people that didn't know that that was a comic book first. Right, right, the right. The Ninja Turtles was a comic book? Yeah. Because I remember as a shorty, I didn't know. Because nobody uh, around me, any of the adults that I knew collected comics, they never mentioned that shit to me. Because they were strictly Marvel DC people. Right. You know? Independents weren't as big in the... Like, exactly. Movies, yeah. Exactly. And a lot of people I hung with were still mainstream. I think Image did a lot for bringing of course. that out, but that's, that's another thing. Yep. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. We're just going to get started right away, man, because it's a lot of shit, like we said. So you, you ran down the list in the 90s. We had Spider-Man, the animated series, which I thought was fucking phenomenal. It was great. It was the really voice great. characters, the voice actors on there were just, they were very spot on. Um, I loved the animation. What I didn't love was sometimes they re- re- recycle some of the animation. Like, uh... The, the Venom episodes where you, the, the first the three parter yeah uh, where Spider Man's climbing the, the rocket silo it cuts and it's the scene from Night of the Lizard where he's crawling through the sewer pipe all of a sudden I was like what wait what is that you know and I noticed that the Spider Man show did that quite a bit they would recycle old footage they got lazy on the animation yes but to me that was that was when I learned that Spider Man was Italian did you know that that Peter Parker was Italian you didn't know that is that really even important well, I mean, no, but it's always interesting to know stuff like that, or just to find like, stuff like that. Like, is that something they just established on that cartoon? I don't know if that was established beforehand, because I remember it was, the again, the costume saga, where um, the the black suit started to change Peter's uh, attitude. And he's he gets to the Empire State University, and he's on the ceiling, or on the on the outside of the wall, and he's like, I need a new outfit, you know, we need to be inconspicuous. So he's like something. Uh, he's like something hip, and then like he looks like a rock star. He's like, no, 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 something more traditional, something Italian. And then he puts the suit on. He's like, perfect. Then he jumps down. He sees Deborah Whitman, and then Flash Thompson sticks his nose in there, and then he gets in Flash's face, and Deborah Whitman's like, Peter, what's gotten into you? He's like, yeah. I just thought it was a badass cartoon. Wait, but, right? Leave me the but, fuck alone. <laughs> wait, but, <yeah. laughs> I, but how does that establish that he was Italian? Well, the fact that he's like, I need something more traditional. Something Italian. But that's, so that's know, like saying, saying, I need something more traditional, something Italian. Italian is not my tradition. I'm Puerto Rican. Right on. You know what I mean? So for me, something traditional would be like a taxi cab hat, um, some fucking slacks, uh, and then a ruffled bowling t-shirt, and a table and some dominoes. Nice. 
and an old man that has to be there and talk with a raspy voice, like, <laughs> Mira, te estoy diciendo cuando tu ves. Like, you know, talking like that. That's almost Italian kind of too, though. No, you the don't know. raspy voiced Italian guy. Like, uh, listen here, you motherfucker. Eh. It's a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit. Anyways, but no, I thought Spider-Man was just like, at the time, because... You, you, thought, you thought Spider-Man was a bop? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, at the time, it's just like, that, that cartoon was just so badass The cartoon was awesome, man. And then, when that cartoon came out, I was on the fence about my toy collecting. Like, I was still opening the packages and playing with the figures. Mm-hmm. And I will admit, for that toy line, dude, people are going to fucking think I need psychiatric help after I say this. When I knew what action figures I had, I wasn't one of those kids that just busted out the figures and I'm just like, all right, let me play. I would make, I would fucking sit there, like for Christmas, I knew what figures I was getting. I would outline a script of basically a general idea of what I wanted to do and then sometimes write minor side notes for the characters' lines and then when I got the fucking figures, open them up and play by the script. Like, I knew the script already. Like, this scene, this is going to happen. And that, that, like, uh, you remember the figures from that show. Remember how Peter Parker came with the camera that wrapped around his neck? I gave that to Green Goblin, and I pretended it was that fucking, that portal thing that he used in the cartoon to trap nice. Mary Jane. <laughs> hey, dude, I was on it. But anyways, um, that cartoon helped me, like I said, it spawned me turning from a toy, uh, like playing with my toys, to actually starting <clears throat> to collect them, because uh, I loved how they look in the packages. And I was like, man, these are badass. But I was still playing with them. And then over time, I was just like, eh, okay, I got a Green Goblin. You know what? I'll buy another Green Goblin, because I like how he looks in the package. Oh, you know what? I got a kingpin. I know kingpin's hard to find. I remember when that fucking when that line came out, Rhino, the original Rhino figure in that line, he was like forty bucks because you couldn't find him anywhere at the store because collectors were swapping him up. And I remember going to comic shops in the city and seeing him for forty, fifty bucks. I'm like, I just want to play with assholes. <laughs> you know? I mean, now I got like I'm like six rhinos, but that's a different story. Uh, but no, Spider Man was definitely badass. Cartoon animation was great. Towards the end, it got a little slow. Like, when they started doing their seasons based off of one title, like, uh, what was it, like, Sins of the Father? Yeah. Chapter 4, Chapter yeah, 5, that Chapter 13. Me too, the yeah, it, did, it looked like they were just trying to uh, have a little, little bit of stories that made an overall story. Like They're the, trying to serialize a little too Like, much. with Blade, when Blade got introduced. Yeah. And, you know, some of that shit was just a little, like, I, it got boring with the tab of the time, with Silvermane. And but that, I was like, that eh. started, like, the explosion of Marvel cartoons on Fox and other channels. Because <clears throat> it was. X Men after Spider Man? Before. Oh, well, X Men came out first. X Men was the first one in the early 90s, 91, 92. Spider Man didn't bow out till like 94. Really? Yeah. X Men was early on because remember they had the action figures in X-Men the orange. X Men was the bomb. X Men was the shit, I love man. That shit. Man, I remember being in like fourth, fifth grade and I hadn't watched X Men yet. I knew of it. I just it didn't, I didn't know what it was. I knew, I knew it was something with comics. I wasn't into comics full time yet. But I remember some of the kids in the class were sitting at lunch. And like, oh, did you see the new X Men? And I'm like, listening because I kind of, like I said, I knew somewhat of it. And they're like, oh, you know, they were saying the Saber Tooth is Wolverine's father, and it was this up, and they're going on. I'm like, man, I gotta watch this shit. <laughs> so I started watching it, and I was hooked. And one of the things that did it for me was uh, the voice actor who played Wolverine. To me, that's Wolverine, just like Kevin Conroy is Batman. That guy is Wolverine. And then when they did the other X Men cartoons, what was it? Uh, X Men Evolution and Wolverine the X Men. Wolverine the X Men. They changed that Wolverine actor. It was now it's this new guy who's been Wolverine ever since, and I like him, but he's not that Wolverine. You know what I mean? But that X Men cartoon, same thing. Very badass run. Towards the end, started to get a little weak. You know, sometimes the animation changed a little bit, and I was just like, "What is this crap? They look like Jello." You know, like the lines weren't as tight. Uh huh. I think it was the. I remember. Remember when they used to put cartoons on prime time, like on a weekday night, like Friday nights, yeah. seven p.m. You know, you're like whoa! It was like a mind blowing thing. I remember they did the two parter with uh, well, not the Flanax, but the alien that came, the Lady Deathstrike found underground in the Morlock tunnels, and it was her and the Reavers, and uh, it was Wolver- the only heroes in the episode were Wolverine, Gambit, and Jubilee. And they went down there to investigate, and at the end of the first episode, Lady Deathstrike has tried to cut Wolverine, and he ducked. So she slices the ship, and that alien came out, and it was basically like like absorbing the people. Do you remember that? I do. That's when the animation changed, because I remember them running through the sewer, and they looked very, very loose, very cartoony, very jello. You know, I'm like, what is this crap? In my opinion, that's when it started to go down. Like, the first two seasons of that cartoon were the shit. You know, they introduced Bishop, 
and Cable body slide by one. <sighs> you know, and from the future. Dude, that cartoon was just all around badass. The cartoon was awesome, dude. You know, and then every week that you watch, you're like, who's going to make a cameo? They, they delved into so much with that. I mean, you got Mojo, you got Mr. Sinister, you got Apocalypse. They're like, they, they were And they did justice the to the Phoenix and side. they did. <coughs> Absolutely. They, Absolutely. It's like they almost pulled that out of the Claremont that was, Burn I think books. one of the beauties of those early Marvel cartoons is they took a lot of material and kind of rehashed it mm-hmm. and brought it out. Um, changed characters around a little bit. Yeah, they bit, changed characters. Because obviously like Gambit wasn't around. Movies, you know? Right. But uh, this man, it was awesome. Oh, yeah. And Hell, yeah. The best of them all, in my opinion. Batman, Batman the animated Batman. series. Fuck, yeah. The very first episode I remember watching, again, it was a prime time episode. I think it was the... Towards the very... I think it might have been the very first episode. The very first episode was the Christmas Joker special. Remember that? Where he kidnaps the uh, Gordon family? Or Commissioner Gordon, Art the Commissioner. reporter. I believe it was. It was the very first episode was the Joker episode. I thought the very first episode was Cat and Claw. You're right. You're right. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? I do. Where he kidnaps Gordon and like they're like on the fake TV yeah, show. Yeah, he does the TV show. Yeah. When Bruce and Dick are sitting down to watch, uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Yes. Because because Bruce has never seen it. Yeah, that was my very first episode that I had ever watched. That was such a great show, man. Dude, I was hooked because. Growing up, I was a Marvel guy. You know, I was just starting to learn about all the Marvel characters. I, obviously, I knew about Superman and Batman because I watched the Adam Martin. West show. Everybody knew Superman and Batman. But as far as the mythology goes and the characters, I really wasn't too familiar with them. So I'm watching this. I'm like, okay, I know Commissioner Gordon. I know Batman. I know Robin. I know Joker. Whoa, who's this chick? Harley Quinn. You know, as the world gets introduced to her, I'm, just, I'm hooked. I'm like... Yeah, talk about, like, giving something back. That show created a character that did not exist before that show... And now she's one of the biggest characters in DC. I have her tattooed on my leg. Dude, my daughter is named after her. Thank you, Bruce Tim and Paul Dini. Right? You know? Man, those were the, just some spot-on interpretations of the characters, too. I love the, the feel of the show. One thing I noticed that that cartoon did that no other cartoon has ever done is there was moments where, like, in every show or every cartoon you watch... No matter what scene it is, there's always like music playing in the background to accompany the, to put, set the mood of the scene. Batman never did that. There was times where it was complete silence, and he, you just hear the footprints or you know the the walking of somebody or the sound effects that you needed to hear. Like you would hear, like if it was a <coughs> drive-by with some gangsters or something, you hear the car screaming, right. screeching, the gunshots, but you wouldn't hear the chase music. And I thought that was really badass because it really puts you in the moment. When you heard the music, it kind of threw it off a little bit. You know, like, ah, it's played out, it's music, blah, blah, blah. But um, when they started doing stuff like that, where they had things with no music, that is cool. And then the beauty because of it that felt show real. Is, uh, is I, it aged. Yes. You know, they incorporated the timeline aspect into it, where Robin became Nightwing. Mm-hmm. And Tim came in. Obviously, you know, they jumped over Jason Todd. Right. It's but it still, but it still explain, worked. But still, yeah. You know, and... Another thing, the set pieces, the way they they portrayed Gotham, because at that point, on, on the screen, Gotham was the Adam West, and it was the Tim Burton film, the first one. The, I don't think the second one was out when that cartoon. Went. Wait, when did that cartoon come out? You remember ninety three ish? I think it was ninety one or ninety two. Okay, so the, yeah, the Batman Returns wasn't out yet then, because no. Batman Returns came out at the end of ninety two. Um, so it might have been around the same time. It's probably close. I think it was close. But um, at that time. Gotham was it wasn't neon yet, but it, there was something off about it. It's like very dark, very um I, I can't put my finger on you know what I'm trying to say though. It had like an old school like architecture to it. Yeah, like, and it just always cool. seemed rainy. You know, like it was raining it was constantly. Grim. Yeah. Whereas the animated series brought it on, it felt like the nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. I was waiting for Al Capone to come out. You know, it and the way the the portrayal of the the, the atmosphere the buildings, yeah, the structures, really the cars. Yeah, it was really to like, put that in the time period, that show, because of the cars. Yeah, it was like all old school stuff, mobster stuff. And I was like, this is great. Because when I was a kid, when I was in school, and people would ask, and the <coughs> teachers would be like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd be like, I want to be in the mafia. I didn't know any better. I just always thought the wise guys were badass. So I wanted to be a wise guy, too. That is th- one of the things I've got to say that DC has done a tremendous job with over Marvel. They're animated. Is their animated universe? Oh yeah, and building a cohesive animated universe because all of those series interlock in together. Yeah, 
And they even sometimes in the stories will make nods to past stories mm-hmm. or things that happened before, which you don't get a lot in, in cartoons. I thought Superman was great. Superman was another... Man, Superman was fantastic. I just did not like the final episodes. The two final episodes. The two-parter. Yeah, I don't remember the final episodes. Where basically Superman becomes a villain, and he's like responsible for all this destruction, a la Man of Steel movie. <laughs> oh, you know, that was... Uh, I know I know what you're talking and about. And it ended on a down note, which that really was, didn't uh, see very often. That was an alternate... That was almost like an Elseworlds kind yeah, of tale. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, that's... I'm thinking of Justice League. No, you're thinking of Superman. It was like very red. The sky was red, very apocalyptic. There was, a and he was responsible for like all this destruction. And it was his Lois was t- was like pretty much the only one who still believed in him. And she's like, "You need to prove yourself to the citizens of Metropolis again because they'll never accept you after what you've just done." Yes, you know, I'm definitely thinking of a Justice League episode. Okay, it's where Superman, like at some point, just decides to he kills, but he's not. He's put in a position where he really doesn't have a choice. Okay, but then that kind of changes his demeanor. Where the entire Justice League kind of become a little harder, a little more edgy, and then it's the f- uh, the Flash crosses over into this world. Okay, everything's all fucked up, and their Flash is dead. Okay, and then it's uh, they decide to come to our Earth. That's the fucking crime syndicate. It's but it's not the crime syndicate. But it's it's almost it's, it's, it's very similar, right? But they're not evil. They're right. just kind of. More on it, it's like Punisher-ish. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're they're more in the gray, right? Than the typical Justice League story. Yeah, I don't remember Superman's. I gotta get that man. That's that's great. I have Batman, but I mean, and then you go into Justice League Unlimited, which did a great job of bringing in like obscure characters, right? Although there are some of those characters who really could do without. Uh, they sold toys. Yeah, they did. They did. It's really a shame that that season that show only lasted two seasons. I like well. Technically, it's still considered Justice League Unlimited and the Justice League cartoon is considered one yeah, big cartoon. So it's four just, seasons, just with the name change. Yeah. Um, but it all started with Batman. Well, Batman you know? did the same thing because Batman in the season third four, season, season four, was it four. It was called nicknamed Gotham Knights. Uh, I think in season three it becomes the Adventures of Batman and Robin because they switched networks. Right. I think they went to WB for a minute, and then they ended up on somewhere else. For the final season, because the, the animation changed, right? But man, great shows those shows, which is it's kept it up to today. You know, I mean, Batman Beyond, dude, what a great take on Batman. You know, they didn't really they didn't go back to the well for old characters. They created the only real thing that you had carrying over from the Batman universe and beyond was old ass Bruce Wayne and Barbara Gordon as the commissioner of the Gotham Police, which I thought was awesome. Right until they did that, I think Mister Freeze might have been in an episode. Of, of Batman Beyond. Beyond. I don't... See, Batman Beyond, I didn't really get into. No? No. Because at that point, I was already... I, I had stopped watching cartoons because I was more... I was outside. I was more social a little bit more. And uh, I kind of stopped watching cartoons as much. I wasn't home as much right, right. to watch them. So you didn't get into, like, Static static Shock? No, oh. not at all. Not at that all. That was a good cartoon. I was still... You know what? One was my favorite, and um, I actually hunted it down at Wizard World a few years ago, and I ended up paying, like, 20 bucks for it. Probably one of the best $20 I've ever fucking spent. Freakazoid. Freakazoid. Dude, I love that shit. I love that cartoon, dude. And, like, to sit back as an adult now and watch it as compared to a kid, there are so many jokes that went over my head as a kid watching this thing. That was that whole Animaniacs type of humor, though. Yeah. Um, one of the best ones I loved was, well, first of all, the theme song was just great. But then one of the running gags was the cop, Cosgrove. He never did anything. Every time Freakazoid seen him, he's like, hey, Cosgrove. Hey, Freakazoid. What are you doing? Eating an ice cream. Mmm, that looks good. Want to go get one with me? All right, cool. Then they're eating ice cream. Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to go save the world. And he, like, that's a prime example. Like, sticking it to the man. He got some <laughs> shit. You know? Animaniacs, another one. Way over my head. You know, now I sit back as an adult and watch it. I love that. All that shit, man. That was great. Not even just comic book cartoons. But like I said, Freakazoid. Uh, Animaniacs. Tiny Toons even had its own. The 90s was a good era for cartoons. Great era. Great. I mean, I, I don't think it would have been possible without things like Challenge of the Super Friends. Of course, Spider Man, his amazing friends. Another show that gave you a character that didn't exist in the Fire comic Star. book, Firestar. Yep. Oh, what a fucking great show! Like who, who would have ever thought to team up Spider Man with Iceman? Yeah, he just came out of nowhere. And then you got like cameos by the X Men on that show. That was another great episode of the uh, Spider Man with the mutant agenda, where it kind of t- borrowed from the actual uh, comic. 
of the mutant of the same name where it was Hobgoblin versus Beast and Spider Man, mm-hmm. and they were trying to find a cure for whatever. And uh, that was just, dude, Mark Hamill as the Hobgoblin. How badass was that? He looked, he like took Joker and just broke it down a few. The laugh went from high pitched to just low. Man, that was a great Hobgoblin. And then they played off the mystery of who was the Hobgoblin. I'm sorry I keep going back to Spider-Man. It was, it was a good show. Dude. It was. The Yo, animation on that, some of that stuff. Mark Hamill did a wicked Wolverine, dude. Did he now? He voiced Wolverine in quite a few of the video games. Did he? Yep. Hmm. News to me. Wow. Pretty good, pretty good Wolverine, man. Very much akin to that 90s X-Men cartoon Wolverine. So kind of gritty. Yeah, very much. Nice. Nice. Mark, who would have thought Mark Hamill would resurrect his career with the Joker? Luke no. Skywalker. He gets to be Luke Skywalker and the fucking Joker. That's awesome. Yeah, when you think about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know, dude. Like I said, a lot of those fucking cartoons were just great, man. Um, and, you know, now that I think about it, people talk about they don't understand how, like, Aquaman or, like, The Flash would do because, well, people don't know who they are. Dude, those guys were all on Challenge and Super Friends. That's true. Man, Black Lightning was on Challenge and Super Friends. <laughs> Apache Chief. Apache Chief, mother... And Nuck Chuck. Yep. That shit'll work. Hell yeah. That shit'll work. Now, whether Aquaman gets his own cartoon and it succeeds, I see it going the way of the Silver Surfer cartoon. Yeah, totally. Flash, I could see having his own cartoon. I could too. I you could know, see a Flash cartoon going. That would be so badass. I really think it would. I mean, he was so great in the, in the animated stuff. He's, that's just a great character that deserves fucking. You know the Green Lantern cartoon that was that just recently finished on Cartoon Network or whatever. Um, I didn't get to watch any of that. I don't know how. I heard it was pretty good. I can't tell you how fucking disappointed I am with Cartoon Network for canceling that show. Well, it was that. Oh, good. it was. It was man. It was what like CG, right? It was the Green Lantern cartoon we deserved. Goddamn it! I was just gonna say, why don't they do a good Green Lantern cartoon? Um, I, like I said, I never watched it, so I'm you not know, sure. like I'm not even really sure with what happened there. A lot of people say that like. Cartoon Network just didn't get behind the show, and Warner Brothers just kind of was like, "Well, what?" And just let it fade. And yeah. Tried to move on to something next. Um, fortunately, they finished the entire season. It really sucked, man, because they created. I mean, as a fan of Green Lantern, they took the whole idea and changed a lot of things, but it didn't bother me. Like okay. uh, they added a new character. The, the main characters of the show were Hal Kilowog, a uh, this ship that had its own. AI intelligence. Yeah, I was reading the, the comic, the comic that yeah. went along with it that Art Baltazar was writing. Right on. That I was reading. I love that comic. I thought and, it was pretty uh, good. And this Red, the Red Lantern. Lantern. That was kind of not really a bad guy. Yeah, yeah. And dude, the way like, like they built this great fucking love story between this Red Lantern and this artificial intelligence mm-hmm. that you got to see play out and it ultimately ended with him like, like redeeming himself and ultimately I believe had we got to have seen a season two that guy would have come back in season two as a Blue Lantern. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. Dude, they, they introduced everybody. I mean, it started out primarily the bad guy, and it was the Red Lanterns okay. in the first season. Then it became, like, the Anti-Monitor, who they kind of misused, in my opinion. Okay. But it was still good for what it was. But they brought in other corps. They did kind of stay away from Sinestro. Really? And Sinestro well, he, he or the Sinestro Corps itself? The Sinestro Corps itself. Okay. He was in an episode, and he was a Green Lantern. Okay. So that being like they kind of stay away from that. Uh, we, you did get you did get a Lark Fleas episode. Okay. Um, you did get you didn't get Indigo Lanterns, but they did so blue. Okay. You didn't get you did get Star Sapphires. I think the really only ones they didn't touch were was the Sinestro Corps hmm. and the Indigo. You think maybe they would have saved the Sinestro Corps for another season? I had think they, so. Had they were. Continue. I think they were just trying to build up the concept to see if they could get it out there. Because why, why shit out your best storyline out the gate? Because mm-hmm. in my opinion, like the fall of Sinestro would have possibly been that show's greatest storyline. Mm. That and and Razor trying to find Aya. Okay. Because it's she like ultimately in the end of the spoiler ultimately at the end of that series she gives her life to save them mm-hmm. and like she's she was designed by the Guardians. But being in, around Hal Jordan and Kilowog, like it helped her intelligence kind of evolve to where she started to. She became more self aware. Right. Okay. And she started getting emotions and stuff. Nice the, the AI shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's and the she same. felt love for Razor. I, yeah, yeah. But he was so angry and pissed off that he wouldn't admit it until she died. Right. Which is kind of, I think, what helps him redeem himself. Okay. But I think that would have been another story I would have liked to have seen play out just as a fan of the cartoon. Of the cartoon. But there was just a wealth of material there to hit. I mean, they could have done the black. 
it's a little heavy, the Black Lanterns, but they could have done it anyway. Right. There was a lot they could have done in that show. I, they could they could have found a way around it. If going back to the Spider Man cartoon, if they found a way to do Carnage, yeah, they could have found a way to do the Black Lanterns. Absolutely. Now speaking of Carnage, I didn't like the way they did it. No, not at all. You know, I don't really know how they handled Carnage on that. You show. don't remember? No. Well, first I didn't like Venom's head because it looked like a butt. I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> like the top of his head was just like. This no, I you didn't never caught that? that. No, yeah, his head was just always like this. Really? It's like he had a butt. He literally had a butt head. He had an ass head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I thought it was cool. That's something they pulled out of the comics. You know, Brock was in jail. They, they obviously they twisted it a little bit. They had uh, Mordo uh, working for Darmamu realized that they needed somebody. They needed to collect souls in order to chant uh, to power this portal for Darmamu to step into the our, our world again. So they're like, okay, what do we do? Let's go after Venom because Venom can give us the souls we need. So they go and uh, they have uh, they bust Venom out of jail to go. That's what it was. It was um, not only did he need the souls to power the portal. There was a gun, like a ray gun, uh, like a portal over some bullshit that Tony Stark invented. So um, there was a press conference. Peter was there. Jonah Jameson was there, and Rhodey was there because Rhodey was like head of security in charge of the of what was going on, of the presentation or whatever. So. Dorma or Mordo takes uh, they find the black suit it arrives back on earth Dormammu could sense like there was a, uh, a, sh- a comet coming and the costume just happened to be on the comet so they got to they knew it was landing they rigged it so they got the costume onto the right people mm-hmm. and they hypnotized these people to go visit <coughs> Eddie Brock in jail so he's there and they're like well they're like Brock you got a visitor and it just so happens Cletus Cassidy was in the next cell just like in the comics and they hated each other so Mordo, you know, or excuse me, not Mordo, but this lady who's wearing the symbiote costume walks in, and they're like, Brock, you got a visitor. And he's like, who the hell's going to visit me? And he looks, he's like, do I know you? And she's like, oh, we've waited forever to be bonded with you again. He's like, what? And then the suit comes off the girl through the jail bars and forms Venom again. So he busts out. And in the comic, what had happened was the symbiote reproduced. Yeah, I remember. And it left the a piece of spawn there, which bonded to Cassidy. And the, obviously, they're not going <coughs> to talk about that in the cartoon. Yeah, no. So what happened was... Cassidy <coughs> witnessed everything that happened. Once Brock got the suit back, more like um, a hologram version of Mordo showed up, and he explained. He's like, "Oh, this is a gift from Master Dormammu. He needs you to do a job for him." So after he Brock left, Cassidy was like, "Yo, yo, yo, over here! I want that power. I want this. I want that." So uh, Mordo's like, "Really? You know? Do you think you deserve it?" And blah blah blah. And um, they showed a piece. I guess a piece of the costume was hanging. They didn't explain that it was reproduced or anything like that. And the same thing happened. Uh, I, I believe that's what it was. I, I remember Cassidy complaining that he wanted the same power and that he was going to work for Dormammu and do whatever Dormammu wanted as long as he gave him the power to get out of there and do what he wanted. Uh, so more because of Mordo and Dormammu, they bestowed the Carnage symbiote to, uh, Cassidy. to Cassidy because Venom, that's what it was. They sent Venom to get this machine. Venom shows up. Spider-Man's all like, whoa, what the hell? He, tra- he changes his... So Venom and Spider-Man are fighting. But then Iron Man and War Machine show up as well. So it's three out one against Venom, and Venom is still kicking ass. But then Cassidy shows up. He was in the jail cell. Mordo gives him the symbiote, and he turns into Carnage. And I thought the animation on that at first, when he first gets the suit, was so badass, dude. Like, he does one of these, you know, the fucking claws come up. The tentacles are flying all over. I was like, that's Carnage. Yeah, it was, And that was it the was only movie. time they used the tentacles <coughs> or anything like that. Other than that, he was just a red suit. No tentacles, nothing. It must have been hell for the animators to do all that. So he busts out. He ends up being Venom's backup. And then the way they handle Carnage killing everybody was what he would do is carry this stupid jug around. And he, if he held on to you for too long, he basically sapped you of your life force and your soul went into the jug. Hence, killing you without actually killing you. You know what yeah, I mean? That's kind of weird. That's how they handle that. Well, let's get the cartoons for you. They got to find out with that. But we're going to wrap this up and go into a two-part because... I got so much more to say about this. Oh, sweet. So join us back here next week for issue 29 where we continue our discussion on uh, comic books in cartoon form. That's right. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Edwards, joined by my co-host, Junior. Of Comics Remixed. For everything Comics Remixed, you can find us at comicsremixed.com. And you can email us at comicsremixed at gmail.com. That's all the plugging I'm going to do. Right on. That's all you need to know. See you back here next week. Later, guys.